here at uh, Giving Tree, CBI's Giving Tree firm. It's a nonprofit um, just north of Lansing, uh, between Lansing and DeWitt on Turner Road. And it's a vocational training center for folks with traumatic brain injuries. So we uh, cooperate with a, a for-profit company that um, finds vocational placements for folks with traumatic brain injuries. And they do a lot of training here, um, help us out in all sorts of ways from weeding, harvesting, washing, um, drying herbs. Uh, there's a lot of um, workshop stuff that goes on in the winter. Right now we're kind of gearing up for um, making birdhouses, that kind of stuff. Um, so that's our primary function um, and all the, all the fields are certified organic, all of our vegetable fields. Um, we also have herb field, um, flower garden, uh, and then we have uh, space that's reserved for another group that comes out um, that does some vegetable gardening that, that isn't certified. Um, so yeah, we're about, about seven acres total, three and a half in production this year. Um, probably a little bit more next year. We've got eight hoop houses, uh, one seated, and um, yeah, that's, that's about the synopsis. Um, I got here la about a year ago, um, and uh, we've been certified, I believe, seven years. Um, so yeah, for for quite a while. <laughs> um, definitely not not a perfect um, production strategy for every farm, but uh, for us, it works really well because we are a nonprofit. We're not a uh, family farm where we're going to be here, the same people are going to be here for 20, 40 years um, and it would be passed down. And um, So with organic certification, the level of record keeping is, is quite high and um, that's actually, I think, really good for us and it helped me out quite a bit when I started um, last year to have those records to sort of go from and to have, you know, harvest records, planting records, seeding records. Um, all the seeds that had been ordered, it, we have all that on record um, through at least 2005. I didn't go back any further than that, but um, to have all those records was really nice and I think it is uh, a really smart way for us to have our organization run. If you're selling at a farmer's market where you're, you're talking to your customers, if that's a large part of your market, then you can explain your production strategy to them and um, if you're pretty much operating organically and they can ask you any question or visit the farm. I always say that I trust any farm that lets you visit, um, whether they're certified organic or not. If, if you can go there and see the animals and see the plants and see their inputs and see their production strategy, then I trust them for a large part. I mean, the ones that I don't trust are the ones that won't let you in. The, the big ones that, you know, you have to go through six different clearinghouses to, to even get access to what's going on at the farm. Those are the ones that I think are people should be skeptical about. One time every year somebody will come out and just take a look around. Um, this happened in, I think it was about May of this year. Um, the You get certified through an independent agency that um, makes sure you're following all the same practices that the National Organic um, Standards require. Um, so we are certified by a group in Ohio so they send somebody out um, once a year and yeah do a walk around, look at all the fields, um, take stock of all of our inputs, take stock of just basically everything that, that's on the farm um, and then we sit down and uh, the idea with all the records is that you're able to follow the crop from the seed, from the where it was ordered from, when it was ordered, um, you can follow the seed to when it was planted and which field to when it was when any inputs were applied to it fertilizers pesticides anything like that and then um, when it was harvested uh, how much was harvested and where it then went uh, if it went to CSA if it went to a restaurant if it went to the market um, so uh, they just pick one crop one They'll go through and uh, look at invoices maybe and say, okay, it looks like you harvested five pounds of arugula. Show me the record of that being planted, the record of any inputs, the record of the seed, and then you just kind of backtrack and make sure that you have all of those things 
um, on record somewhere, whether it's computer or handwritten. Um, so you just go through that a couple times and um, show that you have good record keeping. Uh, you don't have to go through everything and um, they don't require all of that to be sent to them, but yeah, that's, that's how it went this year for me. The tough part is that you're competing with, even I mean, with restaurants or retail, you're competing with people that distributors that can just beat you every time, <laughs> basically. So yeah, um, Four Seasons Cooperative just started, and I think they're filling this niche that really needs to be filled in terms of distribution. So what they're doing is basically getting, say, eight different spinach growers to come together and then selling bulk spinach to one institution, say a hospital, and that makes it a lot easier for the growers to sell to one person continuously that understands seasonality, and then it makes it easier for the buyers to buy from one distributor rather than eight different farms at, you know, six farms this week and then two different farms this week, and that can get really hard with invoicing and communication and all of that. So I, I think it's going to be helpful for everybody. So. I think institutions like, like that cooperative and I think that's going to be really helpful for local food to, because it's not going to, it's not going to happen overnight, but. When food communities work well, it's because it's cooperation between, the more people, the better it works, I guess, is kind of the way I see it. Because um, you need people at every step, you need people to buy the local food, you need people to grow it, but you also need people at every other step. You need people to share a piece of equipment in a way that's cooperative. You need, um, you can't just have one farmer at a farmer's market, you need 15, you know? It's um, every step of the way. Uh, yep. One of the requirements of organic certification is to have a three year at least rotation. So if you grow spinach in one field one year, you shouldn't be growing spinach there again for three years. So you try to just keep things rotating, um, try and keep some fields uh, in cover crops so that you have the space to keep that rotation. Um, and I think that really helps to, to grow the soil, to keep different uh, families of plants in different areas in the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest molecules and microorganisms to diversity in terms of birds and um, pollinators and um, having a diverse group of crops moved around every year really helps keep the, the whole spectrum diverse from, from the big animals to small little microorganisms and um, yeah, elements too. Yeah. That's something we struggle with. It's hard to, it's hard to grow things as pretty as they appear in grocery stores, and um, I think that's that's definitely part of the educational process. Of once you, I think anybody that has a garden will will attest to once you grow food, you realize how hard it is to grow pretty food, and um, and you realize that the pretty food. The ugly food actually tastes better and it doesn't really need to be that pretty and um, yeah we harvest, we're harvesting a lot of spinach right now so the first thing that comes to mind is um, when we're harvesting we come across a lot of holy misshapen spinach that um, we'll harvest for ourselves and we'll give away here to the clients and staff here and we're all glad to eat it and have no problem but um, we usually don't sell it to um, grocery stores and restaurants because we know that you have a harder time selling it. It's just, you, you sell the eyes and not necessarily the palate all the time. When you're putting compost, a good healthy compost on soil and growing plants in um, soil that's, that's rejuvenated and not um, drained of all of its nutrients, yeah, those plants are gonna have far more vitamins and I'm, I can't think of any studies offhand, but I'm sure there's loads of them that uh, showed the difference between um, organic and non-organic vegetables and the, the micronutrients that are present in one and not the other. Um, yeah, I think th there's definitely uh, a tomato look, may look like a, an organic tomato may look like a non-organic tomato. Um, we all know they taste differently, but um, yeah, I think that there's definitely 
micronutrients in there and um, it's a whole different a whole different piece of food <laughs> I think people growing their own food and just you know getting a feel for um, how nature works and how things grow and how every plant's different and um, unique and uh, just kind of breaking them out of that grocery store kind of mentality of seeing produce just appear so perfect and kind of plastic and um, just, yeah, seeing food a little bit differently. Um, I mean, even volunteering on a farm or just just having some experience with plants in the ground and harvesting food from plants and getting a sense of um, just how things grow differently and uniquely. Elfco has been one of our greatest supporters throughout um, all the years that we've been in production. They've been a really steady supporter and that's great. Um, we really appreciate that and uh, yeah, I, I can't imagine what we'd do without them. <laughs> they're, they're buying every week and that's great. It's really nice. I think the cooperative model, by not placing profits as the the number one goal, as the number one bottom line goal, um, I think that's definitely uh, going to help organics because oftentimes organic isn't going to have high profits. It's the, the number one bottom line goal, but if the number one goal is to form a community and keep that community healthy, and um, then that's where, yeah, that's where I think the, the paths cross. And I think people are, just have, just associate the word organic with certain other things. And uh, I think some people are kind of automatically turned off thinking that it's a, it's a class thing or it's a cultural divide or there's, you know, there's a lot of, I think, politics involved in that word and it's silly. I think it's just, I don't know, just do a taste test. <laughs> Grow food the way our grandparents grew food. <laughs> there's a reason why they grew it a certain way and I think, yeah, just let's take it back a couple generations using all the tools we have now. Um, tastes better. <laughs>